Hi everyone, I'm Jess and you are watching Discern with Jim Dennison. Today is Friday, November 5th. Hi Jim, how are you? I'm doing well, Jess. How are you today? I'm doing well. Glad to be with you. Um, today we're going to be talking about the car accident that took place in Las Vegas involving Henry Ruggs. And so this is from NPR. Prosecutors in Las Vegas say Henry Ruggs III was driving at a speed of more than 150 miles per hour before he rear-ended another car, killing the woman inside. The woman killed was identified as Tina O'Tinter, 23, of Las Vegas, according to police. Her dog was also killed. Prosecutors say Ruggs, who up until Tuesday was a wide receiver for the Las Vegas Raiders, was driving 156 miles per hour and with a blood alcohol content twice Nevada's legal limit. Police said that Ruggs showed signs of impairment at the scene. According to court records reviewed by NPR, Ruggs, 22, is facing charges of driving under the influence, causing death or a substantial bodily injury and reckless driving. Both are felonies. When I hear stories like this, I often think of just like, you know, what choices and decisions and circumstances led them to this moment that will like change the course of their lives forever. Um, and, you know, I don't know um, Ruggs at all. I don't know um, his life story or anything like that. But, you know, I imagine that he perhaps had dreams to play football and, you know, never imagined that his life would end up here. Um, and I just wonder, as I was like, just thinking about it, you know, these things happen, seems to happen, a, not a lot more, but we just see it more um, with people who, you know, have money or power or status. Um, and I'm just, it got me thinking, like, is, does that have anything to do with this, like, can those things negatively influence our choices and behaviors? Yeah, and I think it's on two levels. The first level you've already mentioned, as you say, these things happen tragically all the time to people, whether they have celebrity, fame, money, power, or not. It's those that are the celebrities that more make the news, and so it kind of feels like this is something that happens more commonly, I think, in that space. I'm thinking right now about a very dear friend of mine. He and I have served together in ministry for 33 years. His brother's wife was killed by a drunk driver some years ago. And my friend's brothers had to raise his teenage daughters as a single parent as a result. We wouldn't be talking about that. I doubt NPR would pick up the story, but it's obviously just as tragic. So on one side, it looks as though it's more because of the spotlight, but on the other side, we do live in a culture that so values uh, performance and popularity and possessions, and really from a very young age, I think in some ways coaches us to believe that if we are celebrities, if we are athletes, if we're especially wealthy, that we're somehow impervious to the real world, that we're above the law, that we can do things other people can't do. I obviously don't know Henry Ruggs III. I have no, no desire at all to accuse him specifically of anything I'm saying right now. There's a pattern here, however. You think, you think of it in the Bible. You see it with the uh, man who uh, thought he could build bigger barns, you know, as Jesus said, and eat, drink, and be happy. This idea that culture, materialistic, secular culture has that says that you are such a success that you're impervious to the real world. And that obviously is a lie. It's obviously a dangerous lie. And not only does it affect those who believe it, it clearly affects the innocent people who they affect, whom they affect as well. And so it's one of the real tragic, uh, in many ways, narratives of a secular, materialistic, consumeristic culture where we find ourselves. So my second question, Jim, is how, as believers, can we recognize these tendencies to chase after fame or status or money or influence, and how can we combat them successfully? Now, the first thing is to ask your question. The first thing is to be aware of the fact that we're just as temptable as anybody we see in the news. The fact that Jesus is my Lord doesn't mean he's my Lord today. Doesn't mean that I'm surrendered to him today. Doesn't mean that I've yielded to the Holy Spirit, that I'm walking with him, that I'm in the spirit rather than in the flesh. How many examples can we think of through scripture of people that had a relationship with God that fell into the exact thing we're talking about right now? It's that old, there but for the grace of God go I. There but for the grace of God go you. I remember years ago, Jess, I was uh, teaching at a seminary. And we'd had a very public moral failure with one of the pastors in our area. The next Monday, the chapel speaker in that seminary began a sermon by referencing that story. And I thought he was going to condemn the pastor, condemn the immorality that had been revealed, all of that. Instead, after he described the story, he pointed his finger at those of us in the congregation and said, And there, but for the grace of God, go you. And he said, And there, but for the grace of God, go I. That was decades ago, but it was a prophetic moment. 
So start by asking your question. Start by saying, all right, how do I make this not my story? Because if I don't think about it, it will. That is the fact of a fallen human being, is that this will be my story if I don't take steps. Then the second thing that I think comes to mind immediately is you start, every, we talk about this, but start every day by surrendering to the Holy Spirit, being filled by the Spirit. Start every day by connecting with God in prayer and Bible study so that you're staying close to Him. So even if I got off yesterday, I can get connected again today. You know, don't go two days, don't go three days, don't go a week. Stay, start the day by getting grounded again, by getting plugged in again, by staying close to Him. And then a third thought is don't tolerate the small sins because they inevitably become big sins. The private sins become public. Jesus said, What's done in the dark will be seen in the light. Satan loves to tempt us into things that we think we're getting away with when we're actually climbing the ladder rung by rung so that when it collapses, the fall is going to be even worse and we're going to hurt even more people. Don't tolerate what you think you're getting away with because you're not. That's cancer that you're feeding. It may not yet have metastasized. It may not yet be a tumor, but it's going to be. So keep close accounts with the Lord. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you. Lord, is there anything in my life that's displeasing to you? And confess whatever comes to your thoughts. In fact, Jess, I practice a weekly discipline called a spiritual inventory. I learned this years ago from a staff member at a church where I was pastoring. Get a piece of paper get a pen, get alone with God for a few minutes, and say, Lord, bring to my mind anything I need to confess, and write what comes to your mind down on the paper. No one's going to see it, so be blunt, be honest, be transparent, and then pray specifically about each one of those things, and repent of them, and ask God to forgive you, then shred it, or flush it. It's a wonderful feeling to do that. First time I did this, first three or four things I wrote, I knew I needed to write, but after that, Jess, it was like I was taking dictation. The Lord was literally revealing to me things that I'd ask him to reveal that I didn't know until I did. And so on a regular basis, ask the Lord to show you where the little sins exist that are going to become big sins. So admit that it can happen to you. Start every day by getting connected to God and regularly ask him to show you when you're off before you get so far off that the news is talking about you. Thank you, Jim, for all your thoughts. And I think, you know, giving us that piece of advice of a spiritual inventory, that is really good. And I want to implement that more in my day-to-day -day life. And so I hope that this was informational for you guys and just going forward to, you know, keeping these families in your prayers um, and sh extending empathy and things like that, as always. Um, that's all we have for you guys today. Enjoy the weekend, and we'll see you here Monday on Discern.